excited to have Shane Warney yeah. uh, on Property Banter today. Um, welcome, Shane. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. Thanks for having me, Mark. Hey, before we get started, I just need to, to set the scene for everyone here okay. and, and just explain to everyone that, that there are two cricketing superstars <laughs> <laughs> um, here. This is, this right. is my, my little trophy here. Very impressive. This is, it is very impressive. If you just, I don't know, do you need glasses? If yeah, you can I do. read that bowling average there, it says 5.82 or 5.62. Wow. Which is, in anyone's bloody language, it's a very pretty good. bloody good, uh, pretty bloody good bowling. Okay, average. tell me about it then. Tell me. Well, this, tell, this, tell me how it happened. Come on. Well, this this is the whole association. This right. was not just Ely Park Cricket Club. To anyone who's watching from Ely Park Cricket Club, this was, this was the, the whole association. Well so, done, congratulations. They look pretty good on next to a few of mine. I <laughs> Look, I, I can use it as a doorstop, Mark. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it's too light <laughs> to use as a doorstop. No, well done, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Under 12s, I'm glad you. Uh, hang and, on. Do you carry it everywhere you go? I, I look, the important thing about the under 12s is under 12 A's. Yeah, not the not B's. the B's. It's not the C's. It was the best of the under 12s. Well done. So look, I think it's really important to understand that the two cricketing superstars, two found an interest in, in property. Because yep. you've got a really strong interest in property and love property it. banter is all about, about people who love property. Mm -hmm. So if you can just tell us where, where and when did you buy your first, uh, first property? 1994, I bought my first house. Um, I was in, in Brighton. All my houses basically been always in Brighton. Always in Brighton? Yeah, I'm yeah. always, I just love this area. I think it's a beautiful area. The location, the shops, the beach, and everything, it's so close. It's close to the city if you want to go. It's only 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. It's a nice drive along Beach Road. And my kids have gone to school here, so it's always been nice, this it's area. It's your community. And I've grown up in Bayside too. I grew up in Black Rock. Yeah. So I think I've had seven or eight houses, and a couple of them I've had twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I really do love it. I love, I, I think some people look at a house and they go, it's nice, it's great, whatever it is. But yeah. I look at a house and say, look, I might just put that there. What about you take that wall out? And so I like designing them myself as well. Rather do you get hands on? Do you yeah. get your hands dirty? Yeah, or, absolutely. Yeah, yeah you, I love it. You get down there and, and paint and scrub. No, and I don't do that. I observe. <laughs> you observe. I, I observe. Yeah, yeah. And buy the rolls and the potato cakes and dim sums for the, for the <laughs> yeah. builders to say on the yeah, good books the pizzas them as well. at the end of the day and exactly. a few beers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I've just started reading your book. I've read most of it, and to everyone, it's a, it's a cracking book. Um, the No Spin book is, is really great. I picked up on there that when you did buy your first home, you paid it off with your Nike contract and yep. your, and your um, Just Jeans contract. That's right. For so many people right. watching our show, buying their first home is a really, really hard thing mm -hmm. to do. Do you remember how that felt when you, know, you, you worked so hard stressful. to be... Stressful. Stressful, yeah. Yeah, it is, because I, when I purchased the property, I had to borrow money to do it. And yeah. I was still playing cricket for Australia and yeah. then I, luckily enough I did Not pretty... Not paying you very much at that time. No, I think my first contract was $3,000. I came back from 93 Ashes tour and they said you've had a great tour. You know, I bowled the gadding ball and I yeah. took most wickets by a leg spinner and all this sort of stuff. I think they bumped it up to 10. Yeah. Uh, and then I think in 94 around. we went up to about 30. So I think I paid $220,000 for my first house yeah. um, in Brighton, Tuxen Court. And so I obviously had to borrow the, the majority of it. Yeah. And then I was lucky enough, I got a few contracts and that helped me pay it off. But part of me playing cricket, I knew I had to do well because I had a mortgage to pay. Yeah, the pressure's so, on. So the pressure was on. So it can be quite stressful, your first house. I wanted to buy something small, like small steps. I don't think sometimes people overdo it too much. They yeah. see their sort of dream home too early. Yeah. You've got to sort of work your way up to that, I think. And I think if you put your passion in that, of what you like into a house, people will feel that. Because I think when you walk into a house, you feel it. And it's not just put a paint and carpet and you know, it looks different. It's making a home. It's making a home, yeah, yeah. it's different to a house. So yeah, it was, it was a stressful time, but a really exciting time too. And something that I think got me the bug because I said, I saw it and I went, oh, maybe we could put a pool here. So straight away I could you see were thinking the, about it. what it could be. You know, in the end we did okay out of that. And that helped me buy an, another house to step up a little bit more and then so on and so on to the other yeah. eight houses. You, you talk the, kids, the, the other eight houses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the kids trying to work the kids out how to say, Dad, is there any, any danger of staying in one house? <laughs> yeah, that's right. But it is a bug. I think people people have a, a passion for property and, yep. and it's a real bug. You almost get addicted to the idea of constantly buying and selling and, and, and mm -hmm. uh, upgrading. You mentioned that word, the, the idea of a dream home. Yep. I bought. I live in Northcote and, and bought a house there about ten years ago, and a derelict, derelict house. And I, I joke to people, and it's not a joke. Where you have a shower in the morning, you can put your hand out out the hole in the wall and feel whether it was raining or not. Um, but it was in a great spot, and we yeah. renovated it, and, and it's a beautiful home now with a pool and all those sorts of things. But sometimes I walk into it and think, "Geez, how did I, how did I get here?" You know, yeah. you've lived in some of the best houses in in Brighton, and mm -hmm. probably some of the best houses in in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. 
do you look back and think, you know, you, you, you missed out on a St Kilda contract at the yeah. age of 18. Yeah. Do you look back and think, shit. Where did it go well, wrong? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Where did it go wrong, yeah. How come I'm not playing footy? Now, do, you, do you just walk into your home sometimes and think, geez, you know, as a self-professed bogan, yeah. you know, do you often walk into your home and think, wow, I've really, this is, I didn't think I, I could achieve this sort of level of success in terms of where I live? Yeah, no, I didn't. I mean, I had Middle Crescent uh, and a place in William Street, those two houses were, you know, one was on, I think, 35,000 square feet, one was on 29. Yeah. So, you know, nearly 30 odd thousand square feet homes aren't, you know, they're not, they're not a lot of them, yeah. especially in this sort of area and they're Absolutely. expensive. So yeah. I think the Middle Crescent house I had, you know, I've done, I did well over three or four homes. I sort of done well for 10 years of cricket. Yeah. And this opportunity came up, uh, you know, when you talk about 20 years ago with pricing of houses, we all wish we had bought a lot more if we could have afforded it. Absolutely. So I had this opportunity, I saw this 35,000 square feet property run down, overgrown trees, but the bones of the house, it was triple brick. Yeah. It had been you know, 130 odd years old. It was beautiful. a beautiful home. Yeah. Um, and and I, fell in love. And I just fell in love with it. As soon as I walked in, I said, wow, I feel like I'm in the country. Yeah. I feel like I could walk around as much as I like. It was beautiful. So I bought it and then I we did it up. You know, it took me 18 months to do it up. Yeah. And that process of renovating a house is frustrating because it's like, come on, hurry up. Yeah. And, and, and to see that process of housing when you walk in, you go, geez, they've done a lot this week. And then the next week it's like, have you been done working nothing. this week? And then suddenly <laughs> it just appears. Yeah. And to see that process, I really enjoy watching that process and then realising, geez, I should have maybe done that or yeah. I should have maybe done that or I've gone a bit too much here. And you always overspend. A tip for me would be to anyone out there would be try and stick to your budget as much as you can. A tap doesn't have to be five thousand dollars. No. You know, a twenty buck tap that says red on top and blue on the other is okay. That's the job. So you work out what your day to day living is. If you're going to live in that house, work out where you spend most of your time, where you like to hang and spend the money on that, and the other parts where you don't spend as much time in the house. You don't need to go to that top end. Yeah, you can yeah. say in that bottom to medium end, but spend the money where you spend most of your time. It's in really the house. good advice, you know. But stick within your budget. Yeah. You know, and, and don't oh, well, don't overcapitalize. Yeah. Um, I noticed, and probably most people watching will know that um, you had a house with with number twenty three yeah. on the on the yeah. bottom of the pool. Where did that come from? Where, where, who, whose idea was that? Mine. It was I, your I was, idea. Uh, I had this brilliant Tyler who was um, doing the pool, and he was doing all the pull up nice. I said. How hard is it to do a number in the pool? Yeah. Let's just do it. If we if it's no good, we can if you don't mind, we'll rip it up and we'll just put the ones in. Yeah. So they did it. It was a blue pool in, with white tiles of the twenty three. Yeah. And it looked really looked cool. Great. So yeah, now yeah. most houses I build now, I put twenty three in the bottom. Oh, of the you pool. do. Yeah. I was just thinking. I'm going to refer to something here because I can't remember it, but I'm sure you know the movie the the castle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And there's a great line in it where... There's where, many great lines in the castle. There's many great yeah. lines, but there's one where... Uh, is it castle or castle? Oh, it depends on where you live. If you live in Brighton, it's castle. Is it? it well... Northcote, is it? It'll be castle. 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 Ah, uh, yeah. depends. But there's a great line that Dale <laughs> says. He, he, remember when he's showing the value around? Oh, yeah. And he goes, mate, uh, yeah. he says, look at the size of that aerial. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's a big aerial. What do you think? Add a bit of value? <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm just wondering when you showed the, the real estate agent around and you, you pointed to the 23 in the bottom of the pool, did you, did you say that? That's a, that's a bloody big 23. <laughs> no. Does it add value to, to the property when you um, sold it? I, guess. I suppose I've done pretty well out of the houses, yeah. so uh, I've been lucky enough that people enjoy the way I do my house. Yeah. I think it's just a, a novelty thing. You know, yeah, it's a yeah. bit of fun, a talking point over... a a barbecue and a beer in the summer, you can say, hey, check out the 23 in the That's bottom of the pool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that there's a whole lot of other famous 23s? Jordan's a 23. Yeah. Franklin's a 23. Yeah. Um, Brereton was a 23. Yeah, Beckham, 23. Beckham's a 23. A the winner of the Melbourne Cup yesterday was a 23. Yeah. Did you back it? No, I didn't. You didn't back, back it. Can you believe that? Oh, no, I know. I backed every other horse in the race part 23. <laughs> yeah. I was going through my phone with all my mates saying, you've got to back this horse, got to back that horse. And I had 23 in uh, a couple of box trifectas, but I didn't have it outright. You didn't have it outright. I'll tell you who My I My son want. did. Oh, he did? And he's been giving it to me. He said, Dad, how can you not back 23? <laughs> You've right. been number 23 for 30 years. Yeah. You're known as number 23. How can you not do it? I said, yeah, good point. So I idiot. just had to cop it because yeah. I'm an idiot, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, so the last thing I just want to talk about is the yeah. idea, you know, you, you buy property and, and that can be a stressful time, but going through that selling process. Yep. I mean, you you know, you, you're bowling in front of 100,000 people, you're playing poker, you know, with world-class yep. poker people. 
putting your house up for auction or negotiating an auction? What, what uh, equal pressure? What what has more pressure? I think everyone thinks their house is worth more. Yeah. The bottom line is whatever someone's prepared to pay for your house, that's what it's worth. So I mean, sometimes you get lucky. The hardest time is when you have to sell your house, and that's when I think people. That's when obviously they lowball you. People find out and bang, you know, that's where you can not make the profit you would like. Yeah. So obviously, if you're in an ideal world, if you could sell your property in a, in a great market, right buy and time. sell in the same market is obviously the key. But if you can sell it at the right time and you're in that sort of fluctuation of when the property's up, you can get lucky occasionally. But I, th- I think it's a nervous time yeah. in that time. But I think my best advice and what I've always found is that whatever someone offers me, that's what I have to take. Yeah. You know, And you try and hang out and ask for a bit more and try and negotiate. But there's no point putting yourself in more debt if you have to or that to hang on to what you think it's worth. Yeah. You should be getting more because two doors down went for more than what yours did and it should be going for that price. Yeah. It's just a different time. You know, you know, someone might not like your house as much as they like that house. That's just yeah. the way it is. Don't take offence to it. You know, it, it's disappointing. You always think it's more because you've got your blood, sweat and tears and you're emotionally attached to the house. Yeah, that emotion. I think people put an emotional premium on the value of their property. You mm. know, it's where they had their children. It's where they grew up. It's got Christmas, memories. They grew up, all those things. What, but there's no tangible value to, right. to someone else in exactly. those sorts of things. And I think sometimes there's a, a value in just, just getting it sold and moving on. Yep, I agree with that. I, I run a business called Rate My Agent. I'm not sure if you yep. know it's a, an agent review website. Um, but how important do you think the right agent? Have you always used the same agent when you're buying and selling Just homes? about. Yeah. Uh, I've used Jonathan Dixon from JP yeah. Dixon Real Estate. I've used him for all of my houses bar one. So how important is that relationship Very, been? because it's a trust thing too. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, some real estate agents are good to buy off, some are good to sell off. Yeah. You know, yeah. so <laughs> he's been upfront and honest with me, which yeah. I think that's all you want. You want to be able to trust your real estate agent and you want to feel like he's being honest with you, you know, because telling you what it's worth, not saying, oh, I can get you, you know, X amount of dollars when you know he knows it's only worth that, but he's just trying to get the business. Too many yeah. people speak to too many different real estate agents and they take whoever says the highest price to them, value of their house, they'll go with that real estate yeah. agent. And then they're disappointed when they don't get the price. That's right. So yeah. I think. You know, like don't lowball and highball, just go somewhere in the middle. Yeah. But you, I think you warm to someone straight away or you don't. Whoever you feel that you warm to the best and whoever gives you the best honest appraisal, yeah. even though you might not like it, go with him. Yeah, perfect. That that would be my advice. But you now with Dicko, he's done great by me. He's got, um, you know, he knows this area so well. He's been in this area hand. for most of his life. Just about all the houses here, he's bought or sold them for someone. Yeah. And he knows everyone around here. So I'm very lucky to have a friendship with Jonathan. I think he's built a few houses on the commission he's got out of me as well. <laughs> I'm sure he has. <laughs> but um, no, he's, he's been great and I've been lucky to have him. Yeah, awesome. Hey Shane, so thanks for being on the show. Thanks you're you're going to join us at RMA Open yeah. uh, uh, early next year for the Rate My Agent Awards. So yeah, we're, we're really to wrapped to, to have you down there. I think um, Lawrence Mooney's going to oh, interview you. Oh, I think oh. that's right. Did you know that? Yeah, I didn't know Lawrence was, but <laughs> geez, thanks for this the scoop. <laughs> I mean, geez. Well, we'll, we'll work he's a good man, Lawrence. Well, That'll be a fun night. Yeah, we're really looking forward. Warney's going to come down and talk about, I think for real estate agents, really importantly, you know, dedication to your craft. It doesn't yep. matter whether it's bowling a ball or kicking a ball or whether it's being a real estate agent or whatever it is. I think I think in, his, in any business, the dedication to your craft and really giving it 100, uh, we were talking before about 10,000 hours. Yeah. If, you, if you commit 10,000 hours to anything, you can perfect it. So we're really excited about having you down there and, and no, thanks thank for your you. time. No, thanks, Mark. I think the key with all that sort of stuff is that if you care about something, you'll put in the time. Yeah, absolutely. It's as simple as that. And I think if you show passion and emotion, then people enjoy that. Yeah. So, I, you know, I like to think that when people watch the cricket and I was bowling, I showed passion, I showed emotion, showed I cared. Yep. Um, and I think that's why people enjoyed watching me bowl. Awesome. Thanks for your time. No worries, Mark. Thanks Cheers for having me. Thanks, mate. Ta.